But let's dig in a bit more uh, on Biden's economic agenda as we get things underway in the Biden administration. Joining us for that conversation is Greg Dacko. He's the chief U.S. economist over at Oxford Economics. So, Greg, let's just start with the question I think all investors are asking themselves this morning, which is what package will eventually get through um, in the early part of the Biden administration? They outlined the $1.9 trillion. Um, I don't think the street expects all of it to get through, but what kind of parts do you think will make it through and, and how does that bill likely get passed? Well, you're right. I think we, we should not expect that the entire uh, bill gets through, uh, not least because uh, the Democrats don't have the 60-vote uh, majority that would be needed to pass everything uh, without uh, the need for any Republican support. Uh, but we know that they can act if the Republicans don't want to go along with a plan uh, via reconciliation, which is a process that only requires essentially 50 votes in the Senate, the 50 votes that they have. Um, we think that in the end, via this reconciliation process, we'll probably have about $1.2 trillion of additional stimulus that gets pumped into the economy. And importantly, the nature of that stimulus is going to be geared towards fiscal transfers, towards the unemployed, towards uh, the lower income families. And that should juice up the economy and juice up the recovery in the spring as the weather improves and as the health situation improves. So a positive cocktail for the summer um, of 2021. Greg, you're getting uh, the sense early on that you know President Biden uh, really signing off, uh, really coming out here firing in terms of executive uh, executive orders here, bringing a lot of things back that President Trump, uh, former President Trump, took away. Do you think, as an as an economist, do you think this return of bigger government weighs on the recovery from the pandemic? Not really. I think Biden does have a, a very ambitious agenda. He's got essentially three objectives. The first one is the health situation, addressing the COVID crisis in a consistent and coordinated manner. The second one is via executive orders. We've seen a number of executive orders being announced and being signed, including on the immigration reform front. And then finally, there is that fiscal agenda, that ambitious fiscal agenda that aims to essentially ensure that we reestablish a very strong economy in the wake of the COVID COVID crisis. Yes, there will be more regulation on the energy front, perhaps on the financial front, but I don't think that's going to be an excessive burden at this point in the recovery. I think the administration is going to want to be very careful about how much additional burden it puts on the economy as we recover from the COVID crisis. Hey, Greg, uh, going back to the aid package for just a moment, what, what do you think the timeline looks like at this point in actually getting it done? I mean, out of the gate yesterday, I think it was Senator Mitt Romney that there was a comment from him that he was not going to support the bill as it stood. So that does suggest that there is going to be some back and forth here. Yeah, I mean, one option is potentially to get uh, bipartisan support for the checks. We know that there was some bipartisan support for the $2,000 checks when there was this whole debate at the end of the year, whether they should be $600 checks or $2,000 checks. But I think if there isn't evidence that there will be support for the additional $1,400 to get to those $2,000 checks, um, then the Democrats will very rapidly pivot to reconciliation and try to get as much in as possible as they can via this, this process that only requires the 50 votes that they have. They're really keen on getting stimulus out the door very quickly. And using that reconciliation process would then allow them to turn to the second tranche of their agenda, because we know that Biden has talked about the Build Back Better plan, which is aimed more towards infrastructure spending, climate change, R&D. And that's going to be something that they also want to address, um, hopefully very soon. And then, Greg, just as you look out um, to the rest of this year and even into next year, um, are the balance of risks for the economy still tilted or I, I guess not still? Are they tilted to the upside at this point? Because, um, you know, you know, a data series I've tracked is, is your guys' recovery um, tracker, economic recovery tracker. And it's it started to fall, but it's mostly fallen because the health situation has deteriorated in the last couple of months. Uh, a lot of those other measures, um, you know, production, employment, um, you know, certainly the stock market, financial conditions, they've held up OK. Does an improving health situation kind of outline in a, a better than expected situation, outline a better than expected recovery um, that could last not just through the second half of this year, maybe, but but next year and beyond? Yeah, I mean, I think we have to be conscious of the fact that the reality is that today the economy remains quite weak. 
We still have a very large number of people filing for unemployment uh, benefits. We saw over 1.4 million in the past week. We still have a labor market that has half of the job losses that it, it lost during the COVID crisis not yet recouped. We still have small businesses that are struggling. So the situation today is one of a weak economy with very slow momentum. As you highlighted, our recovery tracker showed that weakening momentum as the health situation deteriorated and as fiscal aid started to lapse. But as we look into the spring and the summer and we get this cocktail of additional fiscal support, elevated savings, warmer weather, and increased vaccinations, those should all combine to lift the economy up. And we could probably see growth around five, maybe five and a half percent in 2021, which is higher than we previously expected because that will be partially supported with additional fiscal support. All right, Greg Redacco, Chief U.S. Economist over at Oxford Economics. Greg, always great to get your thoughts. Thanks so much for joining the show this morning. Always a pleasure.